Hey there everyone, today I'm going to show you a debt module I built uh, that is far more complex than your run-of-the-mill debt module and it's for inclusion in your own real estate models. Uh, now this model, uh, your, your, your run-of-the-mill debt module is modeling senior debt, oftentimes only fully amortizing, which is fine but not necessarily representative of uh, the financing environment out there. Oftentimes you get a package comes in, has a, a, um, existing debt that you're going to have to model the assumption of that debt and then a refinance of that debt during your hold period. Well, this model includes the ability to do that. Also, uh, oftentimes you might want to layer on a second or some MES financing on top of your senior debt, and your run-of-the-mill debt module doesn't allow you to do that. This does, so you can change the terms, uh, the pricing of, of your secondary financing so that it's, it's distinct from your senior debt. Finally, this step module uh, allows for some, some different interest calculation methods uh, rather than just your standard 360, uh, 360 over 30. Uh, allows for some different ways of calculating loan amount, sizing the, sizing the financing, um, and some other interesting things. So I'm going to run through how to use this and how it's set up, and then uh, feel free to reach out if you have questions. First off, the module is three tabs. A debt tab, which is your inputs tab, an amortization tab, which is your reports tab, and an amortization calc tab. This is where where uh, all the calculations are being done. On the amortization uh, tab, uh, you see a uh, each month a roll up of the payments, a combination of your senior debt and your secondary financing, the amount of principal paid in that period, the amount of interest uh, paid in that period. And then the, the balance of the total debt, the com com combined senior and secondary, at the beginning of the period and at the end of the period. You'll also notice that this here n knows how long your hold period is and will pay off with a balloon or pay off the balloon at the end of, of your hold period. Then we go to the debt tab, and this is really where uh, the bulk of, of your work is going to be done. And let me walk you through how to uh, fill the debt tab out and, and, and model uh, different types of debt. So the first thing we're going to do is, once we've pulled the module into our model, and I'll follow up with another video that'll show you more in, in depth how to add modules, and there's a host of modules in our uh, real estate library, uh, how to pull those modules into your own model and use them. But here what you'll do is you have an analysis start, and this is an actual uh, date, and you're going to link this to your analysis start, which likely you have in, in a date format. You're going to also link the analysis period in years, and this needs to be in years, and so if in your model it's uh, the analysis period uh, or the hold period is in months, you'll just need to adjust that so this cell here is linked back and is in years. And then finally, the property value. Now this cell drives um, my loan-to-value calculation method when, when sizing the loan itself. And so property value, uh, that, can, that could either be purchase price, uh, that could be development size, and so you'd be, do kind of a loan-to-cost type sizing of your loan, uh, or that could be actual value, and, and if, if uh, your lender is lending on a, on a value of a, using an appraisal that they're, that they're acquiring, then this would be that value. And you'll just link this to uh, the, the method you're using in your financial model to come up with value. Next, you're going to choose which module uh, to, in, to turn on, right? So, for instance, here we have both the, the senior debt and the secondary financing turned on. We can turn off, for instance, the secondary financing just by s ha turning this drop-down menu to no. And you'll see here I used conditional formatting to hide these cells. It also turns off over here on the report. So notice our ending balance at the very beginning, $16.25 million. If we come back to the debt, that is our loan amount on the senior debt. If we turn on secondary financing, and we're assuming right now loan amount of 2.5 million, we come back to our amortization page, now it's 18.75, the combined amount of those two. So for this case, I'm going to actually turn off secondary financing, but what you'll find is uh, the method for filling out senior is nearly identical in secondary financing, but just for simplicity's sake, and not to take too much of your time, I'm going to turn this off. So I, but I have my senior debt uh, turned on. You can turn this off, and what it will do is it'll zero out. You'll notice here it says C debt tab to add financing and view amortization. Uh, 
it, it sets all of your uh, debt parameters to zero uh, in the event that you want to model scenarios that um, don't have any debt that are uh, fully unlevered. Uh, so I'm going to turn that on. Next, it asks us, is this debt that we're modeling, is it new? So are, are we originating a new mortgage that we're going to be placing on this property? Or is there an existing loan that we will be assuming? And if we choose an existing loan, you'll notice that some uh, boxes will disappear and then we'll actually fill out an existing uh, component here. I'm going to show you the new and then, and then we'll do the, the existing as well. So new, um, then we choose an interest calc method. Uh, 360 over 30 is the default, but you can also do 365 over actual or 360 over actual. I'm just going to keep 360 over 30. The loan type, and this doesn't drive or, or change any of the, of the financials, but uh, it's more for informational purposes. I'm going to keep I'm going to keep this at CMBS. Uh, my lender, Cindy Bank, um, and then a calc method. And there, right now, there's just two. Uh, you can add fairly easily, and I do. Uh, I have this module included in my um, Argus alternative in Excel, and I actually s allow the ability to size the loan using debt coverage, using debt yield, as well as loan to value. Uh, you could also conceivably do loan to cost. It just depends on the model that you're including. Here, I only have loan to value and stated. Stated is uh, a manual input. So you just manually say, I want $25 million in debt on this, and it'll do that. I'm going to keep it at loan to value. That way, if my property value changes as I'm changing assumptions in my financial model, it's going to automatically resize the loan uh, on a percentage basis. In this case, 65% loan to value. I'm going to keep that the same. Then it asks for an average rate over term. Now, the reason it's it's uh, labeled that way is you may have uh, floating rate debt, so uh, in uh, interest rate that, that changes over time, or you may have fixed. And, and I didn't want to get so complex that we had to model in um, changes in rates over time, et cetera. So what this is is it's an average. If you have fixed rate, this is your contract rate. Uh, if you have floating, it's what it's your best guess of what your average inter interest rate is going to be over the term of the loan. So I'm going to change this four and a quarter. Then ask for amortization. Now this is the amortization of the loan after interest after the interest only period has ended. If you have no interest only, then your interest only period ends immediately, and you begin with your amortization. So I'm going to keep 30 years as kind of the standard amortization, but I am going to use uh, on a 10-year term. And the reason this this defaults to 10 and we can't change it is our hold period is 10, and we're assuming that our senior debt is going to cover the entire pe hold period. And that's, that's most common. Um, and so for, for this, in, in this case, it's 10, and I'm going to assume three years of I.O., uh, after which we have seven years of um, amortizing payments amortized on a 30-year basis. And then a loan fee, I'm going to say that it's going to cost 1% to originate this loan. And now we have senior debt model. We come to our amortization table. You'll notice uh, starting 16.25, uh, which is our loan amount. And we have three years, so up through month 36, you'll notice the balance doesn't change because this is interest only. And then our payments jump up to an amortizing payment. Now we start paying principal. And we do that through to the end of maturity, which again is year 10, month 120. We have this balloon, gets paid off, etc. So that's how new debt looks. Let's look at existing. So uh, we're assuming now, in this case, that uh, we're acquiring a property, already has debt on it, and we really can't change uh, what that debt is. So we, we've got to take what it is, um, unless we want to pay it off with some prepayment penalty. And then at, at a future point in time, we're going to refinance that to new debt. So our inputs are a little different. We come down here, it has an existing section, and then it has a refinance section. And the existing is, we're going to drop in what the existing debt is. And so what's the interest rate on this, is this existing debt? We're going to say it's 6%. What was the original amortization for this? I'm going to say 30. What was the original term? <clears throat> well, if we do the original term here, uh, and then we say, have, what, what this is doing is this will automatically calculate for us how many, um, or I should say, what the original loan balance was 
what the actual loan balance is and what the payoff will be at the end of the period. And so with these inputs, it's going to automatically make those calculations for us. So it asks, what, what was the original term? Well, the original term was 10 years. How much of original I.O.? I'm going to say zero. But then it asks, how many months are remaining on this loan? And this is kind of the big driver uh, that, that, that is behind the scenes here that's determining the other calculations. I'm going to say there are 61 months, five years, one month uh, remaining on this. And then there's going to be a loan assumption fee at the end. Uh, oh, I'm sorry. We're, there's going to be a loan assumption fee immediately. When we assume this loan, we're going to be paying the lender. Uh, in this case, I'm going to say 1%. And then it asks, what is the current monthly payment? Okay, And this already knows, based on what you said was the original I.O. and the term, et cetera, this knows whether this payment, the, the current payment, is an interest-only payment or, or a, uh, an amortizing payment. So I'm going to say that the existing payment's 37,431. That is our monthly amortization payment. There is no I.O. because the I.O. either has already burned off or in this case there was no I.O. at all. And so then it automatically calculates what the current loan balance is, what the original loan balance was when this loan was taken out uh, however many years ago, and then what the payoff will be at the end of month 61, which is when this loan matures. Now when this loan matures, our hold period won't be over. And so, so we're either going to pay off a loan and then have no debt on this. And if we have no debt, that's going to dilute our, our uh, partnership returns, right? Because we're not getting the advantages of leverage. And so we're going to want to model in some new debt. We're going to do it on a, a loan-to-value basis. But this is based on our existing value. <clears throat> and you could, if you have, if you're, if you're uh, in your own model, uh, uh, slapping a value on the property each year, you could conceivably uh, pretty easily change the model so that this loan to value is based on the year at which this loan, uh, this new loan is originated. But for this case, just out of simplicity, I'm going to say, it, so it, remember the actual loan balance is 5.8 million. So this has been paid down some from 6.2 million. And uh, the loan to value based on the the current property value, I'm going to say the new debt will be 65% loan to value. And so we're going to go from 5.8 million in debt on this thing to 16.25 million in debt in month 61. Okay. Uh, then we're going to say, what is the rate of this new loan five years from now when we originate it? And that's, uh, get out your crystal ball. Uh, I'm going to say 5%. So if I was assuming four and a quarter is today's rate, so let's say 75 basis points over the next five years, maybe it's more than that, maybe say a whole hundred basis points. So five and a quarter, uh, I'm going to say this is pretty standard loan, 30 years, no I.O., and there'll be a loan fee of 1% at that point in time. And so this automatically calculates the term of this loan. So we'll, we'll be getting a, a loan with a 4.9 year term, which is not real. Uh, really what this is saying is uh, for simplicity's sake, at 4.9 years we will be paying this loan off or someone else will be assuming this loan and we'll no longer be on the hook for this loan. So with that said, now we go back to our amortization table and this is now modeling. Look, that's the, the loan that we're assuming, 5.8 million. And then what happens in month 61? We pay off that loan. And we take out a new loan, and now our balance jumps to 16.25 million, right? And then from there, that amortizes down some until the end of our loan, uh, the end of our hold period, and it gets paid off. And so there you have it. Uh, definitely a more complex debt module. Uh, feel free to add it to your models. Reach out if you have questions. Uh, I haven't stress test this model a whole lot, and so there are undoubtedly. Uh, minor errors in, in places. When you find them, and if you find them, please let me know. Um, uh, these models get better as I hear back from you. And uh, thanks for listening.